Welcome to this series of Cisco email security updates. This video is specific to the external threat feeds feature that was released with Async OS 12 for email security. For all new features in Async OS 12, please see the release notes and updated user guide available from Cisco. Specifically in the release notes, there are instructions regarding licensing and feature key for the external threat feeds. Starting in Async OS 12, Cisco Email Security now has the ability to enable an external threat feed engine and consume external threat feeds from third-party providers. We can use these threat feeds in the host access table, message filters, and content filters within Cisco Email Security. Indicators of compromise supported for this release are IP addresses, file hashes for attachments, domain information for sender domain reputation, and URLs for URL reputation and filtering. Once configured, we can set administrative action to allow messages, flag or take additional action on messages, or drop messages based on the threat feeds that are configured. In order to enable the threat feeds engine, we need to load and activate the feature key for external threat feeds. As noted earlier, please see the release notes for more information regarding how to get the external threat feeds license. Once that is completed, we can then go to Security Services, external threat feeds, and enable the service by editing the settings. From the settings, you can enable to insert an additional header in messages that have lookup failures. This can be used in content filters to take action for those messages if needed. Remember to submit and commit your changes. Now that we have the threat feeds engine running, we will need to add external sources for the threat feeds we wish to consume. From Mail Policies, External Threat Feeds Manager, click Add Source and insert the needed details from our provider. Hostname, polling path, collection name, these will all need to be provided from your third party source. Using HTTP or HTTPS for polling, and then finally also include if your user authentication is required. Once we click Submit and Commit the Changes, the source polling begins from that provider, and we will be able to select that feed later in our configuration steps. For this video walkthrough, let us take a quick configuration example by looking at the host access table and associating threat feeds to a sender group. Notice we have a new column to specify feeds that are applied. We'll choose to modify our unknown list, editing the settings for this sender group and then we'll go through and select any or all threat feeds that we've already configured. Remember, for the hat, we will only be able to use the indicator of compromise for malicious IPs from the connection level of the message themselves. Once done, remember to submit and commit your configuration changes. As you can see, we now have external threat feeds applied to our host access table. Next, let's take an example look at configuring a content filter to utilize our external threat feeds. We'll apply this against our incoming mail policy by creating an incoming content filter. For this example, we'll call it feed example. Three conditions that can be applied to content filters are domain reputation, attachment file info, and URL reputation. Notice each time that we go through these that the available sources now has the external threat feeds that are listed from our configuration. We'll stick with URL reputation, go through and add our three available sources, and choose to look at the entire message body and attachments. Next, we'll set an action to be performed. This action can be anything the administrator chooses from the options as listed. For this example, we'll just choose to add a log entry to our mail logs to show that external threat feeds was used. Once the content filter is constructed, it's simply a matter of going and tying it to the incoming mail policy itself and enabling that new content filter. Again, please remember to submit and commit your configuration changes. Our configuration now utilizes external threat feeds in a content filter. Finally, please see the Configuring Cisco Email Security Gateway to Consume External Threat Feeds chapter of the user guide. This will contain information on what we just covered, along with message filter, reporting, and additional documentation regarding external threat feeds. 
I hope you enjoyed this short video. Thank you for watching.